So Governor-elect Andrew Cuomo refuses to say whether he would prefer to do business with a Republican or Democrat-controlled state Senate, but he has gone to great lengths to demonstrate his willingness to reach across the aisle. Now, my next guest is living proof of that. She is Republican uh, Onondaga County Executive Joni Mahoney, and she was a guest on this show back in October after she crossed the aisle herself to endorse Cuomo for governor. She's now co-chairing his transition team and sitting on the state and local government reform committee, and she's joining us tonight from our Syracuse newsroom. County Executive, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I should get out of the way that my dad is also on that uh, government reform committee. So just in case anybody is wondering, um, the County Executive and my father are going to be working together. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very small state. It is indeed. And he is also a Republican. So there you go. Um, you actually crossed the line, as I mentioned, and endorsed Andrew Cuomo, who's a Democrat, of course, and it angered some people in your party. And you could have stopped there, but instead you actually decided to get all in. And why exactly did you decide to play such a big role in the transition? Uh, well, the uh, endorsement first, in, as, you, yeah, as you reminded people, you and I had the opportunity to talk about it at the time, is because um, the Cuomo team had reached out and had indicated that they were aware of the fact that we were trying to work in a bipartisan way in Syracuse and Onondaga County. We've had some success doing that, and they were making a commitment to work in a bipartisan way at the state level. That is um, one of the biggest reasons that I threw my support behind the governor-elect because I know, especially now in New York State, we're not going to accomplish anything if we're going to continue to just fight in a partisan way to make the other side look bad. So you fast forward, uh, the, uh, Mr. Cuomo was successful in his bid. We had a telephone conversation a few days after the election, and he indicated that he'd like me to participate in the transition team. That is a tremendous opportunity for me, and I am willing, uh, very happily willing to serve in that capacity. I was in New York City yesterday for an initial meeting of the transition team. My goal is to lend whatever voice I can to the team he's putting together about the effect of state government on counties. More than every single dollar that we collect in property tax at the county level now supports state-mandated programs over which I have no control. And mm -hmm. then we have to use some of our sales tax money in addition. So uh, everything that they do is um, very, very important to us, and I want to participate to whatever extent I can to let people know that. So the, the governor-elect has actually at this point announced... I think all of his transition committees, and I believe there's seven in all, and there are a lot of big names, and not just yourself, of course, and, and uh, Lieutenant Governor-elect Bob Duffy is actually sort of riding herd over everyone, but it's a lot of very business leaders, labor leaders, I mean, you name it, they're on there. How does such a large group of disparate voices make an impact and come together and make recommendations about hiring or anything else to the governor? Uh, I was impressed by the transition team, the staff that Mr. Cuomo had yesterday. It is very well organized. The meeting was scheduled to last an hour. It lasted exactly an hour. Uh, <laughs> we were told what the process was going to be for us to do the things that they're asking us to do, which is to recruit people and review resumes and make uh, recommendations. Each one of those seven groups that you talked about will have a password-protected website to which they can send resumes or send information, comment on different people that are being recommended, and then there will be a series of interviews and conference calls and second interviews. There are far too many people subject to a governor's appointment for this transition team to get all of those positions in place, I would imagine, by January 1st, but they have an aggressive goal of getting the ones that they have focused on uh, in place by December 20th. So we are off and running, and I am very impressed because I thought the same thing. I know from my own transition here that you have a broad range of views, and it's hard to cull all of the information. And they have a terrific staff that I thought was very well organized and going through the process about how this is going to work. So the governor-elect has actually said that his top priority is talent, talent, talent. He really wants to get top talent into the government. And he also says that he thinks it's been difficult to do that because state government, I mean, let's face it, doesn't have the greatest reputation. Um, have, you, have you started to see resumes come in? And uh, if not, are you concerned that the caliber of people who are going to be applying isn't going to be up to snuff? 
Uh, I am very hopeful because, as you uh, saw the poll that came out, the governor is very, the governor elect is very popular right now, and I think there's a lot of optimism on people's parts that he really is going to make the change that we need, and that is exciting to people, and there are people that want to be part of that change. We have already, each of the transition members that spoke yesterday said they've already been receiving resumes. It is difficult to attract people into a government that is known widely as the most dysfunctional government in the country, but I believe there is a certain level of optimism and hope surrounding Andrew Cuomo right now because people know he has the message people want to hear, and I think they know he's capable. He's coming from the Attorney General's office. He's a known quantity. He has been able to accomplish things. He's been able to accomplish things in a bipartisan way. So if somebody can do it, Andrew Cuomo is going to be able to do it, and I think that that is generating enough excitement to get people who want to be on his team. So what is the ultimate goal? I mean, it, are you starting from the top, in other words, in a particular agency with the commissioner, the deputy commissioner, and then underneath that with ma what we call management confidential, which are staff that are subject to appointments and not, um, you know, and not uh, their public employees who have taken tests and civil service, that kind of thing? Uh, the focus right now is on the agencies and authorities and the top level positions including what you mentioned and council. There wasn't talk about going very far into the staff level because between now and January 1st, if you were to take all of the agencies and authorities and just simply try to interview for the top position, you'd have to interview nonstop between now and then. So it really is the top two or three people in those different agencies. There was talk uh, during the meeting that I attended yesterday about consolidation, which Andrew Cuomo has been known um, to tout and has had some success putting together a plan, and whether all of those positions were going to be filled. And the answer was, you know, Things might change somewhere down the road, but right now there's a tremendous job to be done to build the team to do some of the kinds of things that he wants to do. And are we, I just, I got to ask, are we going to be seeing your resume in there somewhere? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess I'm not surprised. Um, if you look at the anonymous comments online, um, it's, a, it's a foregone conclusion. But I have no interest in working for the state, and it's not for the reasons that I mentioned that other people might be afraid of it. I, <laughs> I, I absolutely love my job as county executive. I'm up for re-election next year. What I want is to have a relationship with people in state government that I can go to to get the help that we need at the county level, and I would love to have the county's voice there when policy is being set at the state level because that's where things can really make a difference. So uh, how are you going to manage your time? I mean, this seems like kind of a time-consuming thing, and there's obviously different levels, mm -hmm. and you're one of, I think, four co-chairs, is that right? There, and, then, and then Bob Duffy is on the top mm -hmm. of it all, and then there are committees which have anywhere from, I don't know, 15 to 19 members. How are you going to budget that? Um, uh, Bob Duffy led the meeting yesterday, the lieutenant governor-elect, and he is clearly in charge. He's very engaged, and he outlined what the process was going to be, introduced everybody. They have a system set up where we can participate with conference calls, and for the most part, I would imagine that's how I will participate. I went down for the initial meeting to understand what the process is going to be. I'd like to participate in as many of the interviews as I can. And then in the um, other parts of the transition, I think many of us will be participating with a conference call. Technology makes it possible for 100 people to come together in an organized way and really make an impact. And as I said, I was very impressed by the team that the transition team, Andrew Cuomo's staff, that was available at that, available at that meeting yesterday. If that's any indication of the kind of operation that he's going to run, I'm very encouraged. Well, this is actually really fascinating, and I hope that we'll be able to catch up with you again before the whole process is over. In the meantime, uh, County Executive Joni Mahoney, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. I'll say hello to your dad. <laughs>